welcome back to my channel the retro farmhouse today's project I am working on a little DIY for Christmas one of my popular videos recently over the last several months has been how to sew a tea towel if you haven't seen that one I'll put that in a link card up above but I thought what else could we do to like make you know, maybe presents for somebody or just something else for your home that you want to use. And I remember a couple years ago, I made some Christmas stockings out of some different types of Christmas fabric. It was really, really easy. I actually just went online and found a little silhouette pattern of a Christmas stocking and made those. So I thought that might be something that you all might be interested in me sharing today. And it's really simple. I had found this um, fabric in a thrift store a long while ago, and it's actually some blue ticking stripe fabric. So it has some imperfections on it in some different places, but I knew I could still kind of dress it up to make it nice, still seem kind of farmhouse, but maybe give it a little bit more like Victorian farmhouse feel. So I also use some different lace overlays and things like that, but this is just the simple basics of how you can make a Christmas stocking. So let's get into jumping into today's project. The first thing I did was take a stocking I already had and just make a pattern. I used a little piece of poster board. You can use anything, piece of paper to make this silhouette. Sometimes if you don't have a Christmas stocking already to make a pattern out of, you can find them again online uh, for free. You can just Google Christmas stocking pattern and you can pull that up, print it off, or just freehand one if you need to. And then from there, I'm just gonna cut this out to use as my pattern piece. Next, I'm going to trace around here on my fabric, and I wanna make sure that I flip that over so that I have both of the good pieces of fabric that are gonna go on the outside. So again, I'm just gonna trace here, and then I'm gonna cut those out. Now I'm going to show you how you're going to piece these together. Obviously I'm going to iron these really well, iron the wrinkles out before I do that. But I also cut a piece of lace here. I thought that would add a really nice touch, kind of a vintage touch to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my backside down first so that the right side of the fabric is facing me. Then I'm going to place my lace down after that and then I'm going to place the front of the stocking. And I wanna make sure when I do that that the wrong side is gonna be facing me because again, you're gonna sew this on the outside and then flip it inside out. To make my hangers, I'm just taking a small strip here. Usually they're like two inches wide by three to four inches long. And this is going to be my piece I'm going to fold to sew and it's gonna be your hanger. So it's really easy. You're just gonna fold one side in about a quarter of an inch, another side in a quarter of an inch, and then fold that in half. And then I'm just gonna take that over to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew all the way around that on all of the sides. Okay, so I have my stocking here and this one's gonna be um, a left hang for me. Most of the time you can put them, the hangers on the right, but I'm gonna do this one on the left. And so what I did was I pinned it all the way around. I have my front and back piece and my lace in between. And I took my hanger here and I put that on the inside here. 
So I just folded that over to the raw edges on the outside, place that sandwich it in between. And that way when I go to sew around all my edges, I'm gonna be sewing that on as well. Now I'm going to serge mine. If you don't have a serger, you can do a zigzag stitch around so that way your ends won't fray. Um, if it's not something that you think will, will get a whole lot of um, wear and tear on it, then you can just do a regular um, straight stitch across, you know, all the way around is fine. But I'm gonna go ahead and serge that and I'll show you what we'll do with the rough edges up here. Now I've serged my edges on my stocking here and anywhere you have like a curve, like on this outside curve or the inside curve, if you're using a just a sewing machine to do this, then taking your scissors and just clipping your curves, which is just taking scissors and clipping, you know, some slits into this part without clipping the stitch, then that's gonna allow the fabric to lay flatter. So anytime you have a couple curves, it's always good to do that. With a serger machine, that just kind of already um, works that for me, so I don't have to do that. But that's just an extra step you may have to do if you have a sewing machine that you're doing this with. Here, I wanted to show you guys what I do with making some of my lace that looks newer, more vintage. So if you've never tea dyed anything, it's really simple. I'm just gonna take this, mostly ones that are cotton or a cotton blend will dye really well. Um, but I'm gonna show you here how I just do that with a couple tea bags on my stove. So I already boiled my tea here and I just used probably about six or seven tea bags. And I boiled water, let that um, come to a boil, took it off the stove. And now I put my tea bags in there and I just let it steep for a little while. I'll put a top on it. And you're gonna wanna let it steep till it gets pretty dark. And then I'm gonna take my tea bags out and just kinda give them a little squeeze to get the rest of that dark tea out of there. Sometimes you can reuse them and do it again if you're dyeing a few things. You probably won't have the same effect as you would the first time you're gonna dye it because obviously the um, tea is gonna be much darker, but you can reuse that if you're maybe trying to make a lighter shade. So then I'm gonna take my material here and I'm just going to put put it in just gently and try to make sure that it gets down into the water. And just pressing it down into the water. If I need to add a little bit more water, which I might need to, this is a little bit more material than I was thinking then you can add a little bit of water. And it might be okay. So I'm just making sure that it kind of gets pushed down. You kind of want it below the water if you can. And I'm just gonna let it sit and I'm just gonna check it. I'll come, I'll probably flip it over, move it around a few times to make sure that all of it is getting covered. Um, if you use a bigger pot, it, you know, usually you'll have more room to kind of move it around. I'm just going to end up turning it around and I just let it sit there as long as, as long as I desire, however the color I want. Usually the longer you let it stay, the darker the color will be. Although with tea dyeing, in my experience, it only is going to dye to a certain darkness, um, with my experience. So... I'm just gonna let it sit there for a while. Um, I'll come back and maybe check it in my, about 15 minutes and see, I might just let this sit in here for a long while. I mean, it's whatever your preference is. And then after that, I just give it um, a cool rinse. Um, you know, you could put it in your washing machine, give it a cool rinse and you know, you can either just let it, let it hang dry or you can let it in the, dry in the dryer depending on what type of lace this is. So this is newer lace from like a fabric store that I had in my stash, but to get a vent, more of a vintage look and the darker look and not so stark white, I'm using this method to kind of bring out that vintage vibe. Okay, so now I surged the top of my stocking here. Of course, I turned it inside out so that I had my lace on the front and my back piece. And now all I'm gonna do um, is I'm just gonna fold this in maybe a quarter of an inch and just sew it up here on the top. Um, if you don't have a serger, you can zigzag stitch all the way across here and then 
fold it over and do the same thing, sew it on the top about a quarter of an inch. These turned out even prettier than I expected them to. I really love that I can find some thrift store fabrics, ones that are vintage curtains, and recreate them into a cute little stocking. joining me today on our video and if you guys are interested in some of these stockings I do have a few of them for sale in my Etsy shop you can check out the link for my Etsy shop in the description box below and don't forget to follow me on Instagram I have more highlights over there of just some more daily things that we're doing around the farm and stick around we'll have some more DIYs coming up soon talk to you guys later bye